Oh, what's up guys? Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender animation and rigging tutorial for you. So one of the things that really makes a great instructor is when they watch your stuff, when people watch it, they think, oh man, I could do that. That, that made that so simple. And so that's what happened with me, uh, I think it was last week, watching a tutorial video by Ian Hubert about rigging. So he does the great lazy tutorials, so you've probably seen them, and he did a great short video about rigging. And I was like, okay, I never really was interested in rigging before, but now I'm, I'm kind of more interested in learning how to do this. I wanted to put together kind of a group of tutorials, giving you an idea of how that rigging works. So we're going to look at a lot of different things, but in today's video we're going to start just by checking out some basics of that kind of re rendering. So first off, thank you very much to Ian. I will link to his video in the notes down below, but I wanted to kind of start a series on this kind of rigging and then hear from you guys what you'd like to see about rigging moving forward. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. First step, go watch Ian's lazy tutorial about rigging. Um, it's gonna get you like totally pumped up about learning how to do this. He also has a video down below where he talks a little bit more in depth about this. This really got me interested in rigging. So go check that out. Um, if you wanna support somebody, support Ian. He's making amazing stuff. And if you're not subscribed to his channel, you need to be. Go ahead and check that out. And then the other thing that you should probably do um, if you really wanna get started with rigging is there's actually a really great video specifically talking about the inverse kinematics on the Blender YouTube channel right here. So this video does a really good job explaining the differences between the inverse kinematics and the forward kinematics. And basically what, what it comes down to is the forward kinematics. Basically in their video they talk about how um, when you make a change with forward kinematics, what it does is anything down the chain gets adjusted with that, right? So if you move this arm, everything down the chain from it um, adjusts with that. But the problem is um, you have to go in and do a lot of manual adjustments. And what the inverse kinematics is going to do, and uh, this is just kind of a high level, this video we'll talk about it in more detail. What, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to control this from a reverse standpoint, meaning you would... Um, um, add something on the end and move it and everything up the chain will move along with it. So it's great for that kind of like automatic rigging where um, you can just move one piece and all these other pieces will move along with it. So um, I want to show you kind of the basics. We'll do kind of a basic project here and then in future videos I'd love to talk about this a little bit more. So leave a comment down below and let me know what kind of rigging you would like to see. All right so basically the way this is going to work and I'm going to delete out my default model for right now. At some point we may actually animate that model but at the moment uh, let's take a look at how the basics of rigging are going to work inside a blender. So um, at its basest form what you're going to do is you're going to do a shift A. You're going to add an armature object. And so if you look at this armature object, what that is, is it's basically the shape in the middle here that comes to the two points, and then these two dots on the end, right? And it just comes in in object mode, and it's just something you can kind of move around. You can rotate it, all those different things, but you can't really do a ton with it until you get into some different modes. So we are going to start off by tabbing into edit mode. So notice how when we move into edit mode, you can now select these three different parts, right? And so if you move things around inside of edit mode, notice you get a little bit more control. So you can move either of these points around like this to get them to a different point in the 3D space. Or if you wanna move the whole thing, you select this central object right here. And so what we can do is we can use the extrude tool in order to add objects to this chain. So for example, and let's go to a straight up and down view right here. What we can do is we can tap the E key and then move our mouse to extrude this. We'll notice how when we move this, this is connected at this point, right? So if I come back in here and click on this and move it around, notice how this other armature is moving around with it. So these are linked together. And basically what this is doing is this is giving a blender an idea of how these things are linked in the real world. So how they move together. So if I was to take this again, and just extrude this out a third time, you can see how what I have is I have these different points in here. And I can move them around to adjust the way this works. I could also rotate it by tapping the R key. So you can control this in the same way that you can a lot of different geometry, right? You can select an end and move it around um, in order to kind of place these things together. And so each one of these is gonna make up a different bone inside of your overall armature. 
And so what these do is these dictate the relationship between these objects. And then eventually, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go into what's known as pose mode. And so in pose mode, basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to move different things around and it's going to affect this chain. But notice how right now, if I do that, nothing's happening. Right, And the reason for that is because we haven't set up this relationship in the proper way. So all we can do is just adjust one thing by moving it around. And notice how that's kind of how this works is right now it's driven where if you move something around in here, so for example, if I rotate this, it's driving everything that's ahead of it. So that's that kind of like forward kinematic relationship that we talked about before. We wanna set this up where we can control it, where we can move something on the end um, in order to move this around and all of these other pieces move along with us, right? So let's go back into edit mode. And what we wanna do is inside of edit mode, we wanna do a shift A and we want to add a new bone. And so because we're in edit mode of an armature, it's gonna add that bone automatically, right? So see how that got brought in right here. So what this is going to do is this is gonna give us a bone that we can use to control this armature right here. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna create a relationship between this object right here and this object right here so that when we move this, all these other pieces are going to move as well. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna jump over into pose mode. And so in pose mode, we can dictate the relationships between these different bones by adding those relationships. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna take this bone and we wanna connect it to this one. So we're gonna select it. Notice that we're in pose mode. We're gonna do a shift click, then we're gonna do a shift I. And that's gonna give us the option to add IK, so inverse kinematics to the active bone. Well, notice how what that does is that gives us this kind of like dotted line in here, right? That dotted line is showing us that there is a relationship now between this point and this point through these bones. So what we've done is we've created a control right here that we can use to move this bone around. So these are now linked together, right? Um, alternatively, the other way that you could do this, because really what this is doing is if you click into this tab right here, um, the bone constraint properties, and then click on this bone, notice how this tells us that it has a target of the overall armature. It has a target of a bone, which is this one. And so because of that, that means that these are now tied together. So you can actually see that by clicking on these right here. And so let's say we wanted to create something a little more complicated, right? So let's go into object mode. Let's just add a new armature over here. We'll tab into edit mode. And we'll just extrude a few more of these right? So something like this. And so then we can do the same thing, right? We're still in edit mode. We're going to do a shift A and we're going to add a new bone. And so we'll just move this up here. We'll just do the same thing, right? I'm going to move it down and then we'll go into pose mode like this. We'll do a shift click and we'll do a shift I. And we'll add the inverse kinematics there as well. So now if I move this around this longer arm, does kind of the same thing, right? And there's there's other things you can do with this, which we can talk about in the future um, regarding how exactly this stretches out and a lot of different things like that. But you can see how in general, we can use this in order to create this kind of like armature bone structure. Well, now what I wanna do, and we'll go back to our simpler object for right now. What I wanna do is I wanna link these together, right? So. We're gonna go back into object mode for a second and let's model an object. And I'm gonna model something very, very simple. So I'm just gonna do a shift A and we'll just add a, we'll call it a cube, we'll scale it down. Move it over, maybe scale it up a little bit. And then we'll just tab into edit mode We'll just adjust the vertices real quick. So we're just gonna move these vertices up right here. And then I'm gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a UV sphere that's also gonna go in that space, right? So I'm gonna move that up, scale it down right here. It's basically gonna act as our joint. So a very simple object. If we go back into solid mode, it's basically just an object in here with something that could be acting as a joint right? Well, what we need to do is we need to link these two things together. Because at the moment, if I go into pose mode right here, and I move this around, 
nothing's going to happen. And the reason nothing's going to happen is because the geometry has no link back to the actual armature itself. So we're going to go into object mode for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shift click like this so that I have both my cube and my armature selected. Then I'm going to go into pose mode. And I'm just going to make sure that all I have selected is just the one arm right here. So if I go to wireframe mode, you can see I have my rectangle selected and I have this armature selected. Well, now I'm just going to do a control P. And we're going to parent this to the bone. So when we parent this to the bone, so now that object is going to move around with this other object. So we've basically created a very simple um, arm with a joint. And so now let's just duplicate that. So we're going to go back into solid mode or object mode. I'll do a shift D. Maybe we'll go into front mode first. So I'll do a shift D right here. I'm just going to rotate that. We'll scale it down just a little bit. And again, we're being very simple with this. Um, I'm going to apply the rotation and scale. And so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to link this to the second bone, right? But the problem with that is that if we go back into pose mode, move this around right now, notice how that's not following along with that bone, right? It's following along with the other one. And the reason for that is because we duplicated this and kept that parent relationship. So we're just going to go back into object mode and we're just going to do an Alt P to clear the parent relationship. So now those are no longer linked together. So now I can just move this so it's sitting right here. We'll rotate it just a bit. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna click on this, do a shift click and click on this, jump over into pose mode. And we're just going to parent this object to this bone. So we'll do a control P to bone just like this. Now in pose mode, if we move this around, notice how this arm is following along with the bone that's in here. And so we're just going to do that one more time and I'll just speed that up. And then I'll talk about a quick way to keyframe the animation on this so that you can uh, make kind of a more realistic animation if you decide that you want to do that. All right, so now this arm is set up where the three different pieces move based on where this bone is moved around. So I'm gonna take this other armature, I'm gonna hide it. And now let's jump into animation mode. So one thing you might wanna do inside of animation mode, and we're gonna jump into pose mode. So we're gonna select this, select pose mode. One thing you might wanna do with this is you might wanna animate this moving around. And one thing you could do if you wanted to is you could keyframe individual movements, right? So you could set this up where in your first frame, we just keyframe these objects. And then in like frame 40, we could have that somewhere else, right? And then we could just keyframe it again. So if we were to insert this like that, you can see how this is going to move around inside of our animation. And that's fine, but it's not really super interesting, right? Um, so what we might want to do instead is I'm just going to select these keyframes and delete them. But there's an option in here for auto keying. And so what auto keying does is that means that if you select something and move it around, it's going to automatically add a keyframe as you play this. So we're going to select this bone, click on the button for auto keying, and then click the play button. And then I'm going to move this around. Well, notice how as I move it around, it's automatically adding keys in there based on my movement. So now if I was to play this back like this, notice how this arm is going to move around based on where I move that bone. So you can use that auto keying to set up things like the movement for your animations. So we can talk more about all of this in the future. There's still a lot that I need to get learned up on, but I'm actually really enjoying playing around with this.
So first off, big thank you to Ian for his amazing videos and for making this something that felt accessible enough that I could try out. So make sure you go support him on his Patreon page so that he can keep making amazing stuff. Um, I think he's been an inspiration for a lot of people. Um, I am interested in going further down this path, talking a little bit more about rigging in depth, but I'd love to hear from you what kind of videos you'd like to see on this. I'm sure I'll get characters, but are there other things you'd like to see as well? So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.